So can we workshop a way to say why we're talking about this right yeah. now? Like, mm-hmm. in other words, I mean, I, I know why, like inherently, I know why we're talking about this, mm-hmm. but I want to give somebody that's watching or listening right now an access point. I don't know if it would be like they could think of something tangible in their life to have like a, in their, in their mind as we walk through this series, mm-hmm. if there's a definition or understanding of what they can be kind of like meditating on. Cause I, mm-hmm. I can see somebody going, okay, these words seem simple, but you guys are talking about this in such an abstract way. Yeah. Like I'm getting lost on why is this matter? What like, okay, I, I grow up. That seems like it's a normal maturation process, I guess. Wake up. Uh, that's just being like aware of like bigger ideas and concepts, which I would argue if you're listening to this podcast, you probably are aware of bigger ideas and concepts because you're seeking them out. You're, you're trying to find more ways to understand the self. Uh, clean up is a lot about probably, you know, maturing and, and we're going to go through in these in depth, but, and then show up as that contribution where I see a lot of people rushing to, mm-hmm. right. They're starting or, or they're hoping that contribution can then do the inner work. They're trying to do the analytic yeah. left brain manufacturing of it. And yes. Less of like the kind of faith emergence aspect like, that I was talking about. Like I think of the show, the good place. Mm-hmm. In the show, The Good Place, they kept saying, like, we just fix the outer behavior and then the inner heart state will follow. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's, I think that's like the general mentality of how to improve the world right now. That's mm-hmm. like on the, it feels like that's what everybody, like, we got to get the right policy through a government mm-hmm. agency. Mm-hmm. We've got to get right, the right social conditions set. We got to get the right framework. Everybody's got to believe the same thing. We all have to do the same kind of practice. If we can sync up socially as a culture. Mm-hmm. That's going to fix all that. And then immediately our inner spaces are going to just take care of themselves. Yeah. If all 8 billion people just behave. Yes. <laughs> if we all just do it, you we'll know. be fine. <laughs> but I think that's where all the effort and attempt seems to be. It's like all in the outer external world. Mm-hmm. And then you get conflict and you get war and all the other things that come from, you know, mm-hmm. humans wanting to make it how they see it in the outer world. Well, and you know, sometimes I think that's an emergent <laughs> of, uh, sort of working from what ultimately disciplined us in the first place, yeah. which might be an institution. It might be religion. It might be something that at some point when we were kids, like kids are madness. I mean, yeah. I love my kids dearly, but if I let them unleash on each other without any discipline, like one would probably murder the other for a fruit roll up. Yes. Like <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, you know, the we're well deserved. <laughs> right. And like some of this like growing up process is like, ultimately landing on an acceptance process Hmm. of the fact that like we're also id creatures like our kids are. We kind of romanticize children, not that we need to uh, go to the other side and, and, you know, villainize them and, and, you know, do what happened to Gen Xers. Um, But thank you. I'm glad you recognized (laughs) it. You're you're welcome. It's not that we need to go to the other side of that, but it's seeing within ourselves. It's like, you know, we, for example, we might blame our parents for a lot of our challenges, which may have been like, maybe they were alcoholic. Maybe there was some really genuinely terrible stuff in your yeah. past, but also like your parents, if they were not dealing with all of those things, like they were probably just trying their best and you were a little monster and they didn't know how <laughs> to reconcile with that. Or like they didn't have the tools that we have today of personality types of therapy of like all of these different psychological tools that have been coming online. I often say that we're at this like interesting cutting edge of social technologies that like just wasn't available for a lot of people beyond yeah. even like 10 years ago. So it, it's, it's a lot of forgiveness for that and understanding uh, uh, those aspects of, of the fact that um, we were these kind of id kids that needed to be socialized so that we can have a civilization at some point, mm-hmm. right? That at some point we needed to get off of like, you know, stealing things at our local grocery store. I don't, I don't, everybody has their sort of like rebellious experience. Right. Sure. And then at some point it's like, needing some avenue to be socialized for a lot of people that's going through a religion uh, or an AA program through it to land on a religion or some sort of institution or landing a job where you become a part of something. You move from this ego focused individual want, 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 like, you know, with, with reckless abandon and then sort of submitting yourself to something. But then you go through kind of later stages of life and that sort of like over submission no longer serves you. Yeah. So how do you become an individual again? And that's part of the oscillation I'm talking about is how do we start to let go of some of the stuff that is no longer serving us? That's what a lot of our personality life path ends up doing is, is detangling from our relationship to having had to be highly disciplined at one point, but we no longer really need that anymore. Yeah. Right. By the way, 
Uh, we are starting something very new here at Personality Hacker. Now, you might be listening to this years from now, and so it's something that's gone on for a while. But as of the time of this recording, it's fairly new. We're starting up an experience of our podcast live once a week online in a virtual format. So what we're doing is we're gathering a group of like minds to come together once a week to watch this podcast together. And then right afterward, we have a membership program where people can come. It's called a personality quest. And we talk about the podcast right afterward. We unpack the learning from it, how we can apply it to our lives. And then we give the entire group of people that have gathered an assignment or a challenge for that week, some journal prompts and some reflection, but also a challenge that week to go test out in their real life, to go explore in the world. All of us are going to do the same challenge that week. And we come back the following week, we talk about it, unpack it, and we get the learning from it. And every week getting together to do this, we've already been doing a few weeks. It's been fantastic. I've loved doing it. It's awesome to see people come and gather live to watch the podcast, talk about it, and go do challenges in their own lives. You should be a part of this. If you're listening or you're watching, we want you to be part of it. Uh, currently, we're doing it on Sundays. You can find out more information to be part of Personality Quest if you come over to personalityhacker.com forward slash quest, and you can learn all about the quests and what we're doing there and get yourself involved, because I think you're going to love this experience, especially if you've loved the podcast and you love personality types and personal growth and the intersection of those two things. It's one of the things that I am super excited about going forward with. Mm. So, and there's gonna be some live elements to that. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that we've got planned around this. But right now we're just starting with these weekly gatherings and I'd love for you to be involved. So some of the reason why this is such a powerful model is it, I mean, based on the kill and Ken Wilbur quote that you just read a couple minutes ago, if a person is focused on contribution this is how to make it as effective as possible mm -hmm. and not keep banging your head against the wall, which it's like, if all 8 billion people could just get on the same page, it's, well, that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. So if you want yeah. to be in a contributor frame, then this is, this is the recipe to do it as effectively as possible. Mm -hmm. And as, as you were reading it, there were two things I would quibble with Ken Wilber on, not because I disagree, not because I think he's inaccurate. And of course, anytime we communicate anything, that's a big idea. We're going to have to oversimplify some concepts in between. So it's not like I disagree with him or anything. I, I agree mm -hmm. with that entire quote. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing I would quibble a little bit on is that the steps that I see that lead up to finally show up, which is the more contributor place mm -hmm. that uh, it's not just inner work and then outer work. Uh, it's like you said, it's like a constant oscillation between them. And I'm sure he would agree with that. He's yeah. just, he's simplifying it so that it's an accessible concept. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is if we're not contributing, what's the point of all of it? Mm -hmm. I, I think a person can live a very rich life choosing to do personal growth work to mm -hmm. find their whole self yeah. to make it so that they, so contribution isn't the target. Mm -hmm. But it, but it's still an emergent because mm -hmm. I've noticed that when people do work to find their whole self, mm -hmm. they almost always have a positive impact on the systems around them, yeah. whether or not they're focused on it and like, you know, really trying to push something through, mm -hmm. they just end up being a contributor mm -hmm. in whatever way, because they, they show up as a, a quality person that mm -hmm. has wisdom to impart yeah. or a calm nervous system that mm -hmm. other people can relax around. So, um, so I think regardless of whether or not you're a person who's really into contribution, <clears throat> which I think, <clears throat> excuse me, certain generations are more focused on, mm -hmm. um, or whether or not you're just a person who wants to become the best version of yourself or the most, for me, it's the most version of myself. Mm -hmm. I think this is a really good sort of schematic <laughs> mm -hmm. for how to determine where you're at in this process. Mm -hmm sort of audit or, um, you know, diagnose where a person is at. And then maybe some of the things that you can go back and revisit and pick up. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and really pick up, that's another one. Pick up is yeah. the next to the fifth category. <laughs> <laughs> Before we were doing all the jokes of <laughs> yeah. throw up, pick up, spit up, <laughs> wipe up, <laughs> well, wipe up, <laughs> whatever it is, whatever it is. Uh -huh. you know, this is a, this is a nice way to go. Okay. Where, where am I actually at? And again, yeah. I would say that for me, when I look at this list and we'll, we'll deep dive into each one of these and the significance and, mm -hmm. you know, like what exactly does that mean and how can we modify it to ourselves? Yeah. But when I look at all of these, I have a tendency to go, um, I might need to go back and revisit that one. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, I collected, you know, I, I got through the level and I, and I, and the, I got the flag at the end. And yeah. It's not a one and done. Yeah, exactly. And now I'm off to the next I level. would argue it's actually harder once you get to like a show up place and you yeah. know, 
you know what it feels like to, it's like performing on stage. You have to be, you have to do all this like kind of maintenance work to make sure that you're prepared to be able to perform in the way that you need to perform or want to perform. And I think at some point it, during our, our growth stages in life, it's like, I think it's very appropriate to be radically self-focused. Like I don't have a personal desire to quote unquote, save the world. I yeah. don't, I don't actually think the world is broken. Uh, and I know many people would disagree with me on that kind of feeling, but I genuinely just want to show up in service and joy mm. in terms of like, and I'm radically selfish in that pursuit. Like mm -hmm. I want to be like, I want to have fun. I want to enjoy my life. But I also, part of fun for me is like consolidating all of this yeah. stuff mm -hmm. and having conversations with you. And then it has the emergent of like someone who's listening will be like, oh, that's really interesting. And then want to dive in mm -hmm. and that'll help with them personal growth. It's almost like I'm yeah. having greater potency by focusing on what brings me joy yeah. than if I were deliberately trying really hard to make things happen on the outside world. And that's specifically my frame. It might be very different for others who have much more of an outer contributing desire, mm -hmm. but like, you yeah. know, everyone's path is individual and, and that's really what we're trying to encourage and share and with this framework.